Hello everybody and welcome to the next episode of Script Writing for Beginners. This is episode 10. Can you believe it? We've done 10 episodes focusing purely on scripts. Obviously we've gone from the opening pages of scripts we've been looking at um, as well as actual how to write your own. And so I thought, being that it's the 10th episode, which is a milestone in my books, I thought, why not actually let's go back to basics and start giving you examples of how to write. Um, last week's episode, I said about, um, for this episode, I'll be focusing on how to write action scenes. Now, in this in this uh, episode, I'm going to give you a demonstration of what I think is a, uh, a bad way of laying out an action scene. And then also in live time, in real time, type out um, how it should be laid out. Now, before I go into this, um, again, like anything, this is always subjective and some people um, uh, will have read scripts that go completely against this. I'm only saying it from my point of view, what I think not only looks nicer to read on the page, like visually, but also what comes across as more enjoyable to read, the flow of reading. Again, remember that anyone reading your script wants to enjoy the um, the process of reading and also to be able to follow what's going on. Um, there's been often scripts that people have written that, especially when it's a heavily action-based uh, scene, be it a gunfight, a gunfight, a car chase, where it's constantly, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and this happens. And I think that the reader will get bogged down and slightly lose track of, of what's actually going on. So remember, even though an action scene can, in when it gets filmed, be, re- be rather long and detailed, when you're writing an action scene, you want to try to get across what's the main information that you want the reader to know that happens. Does someone get shot or does someone uh, escape? Slow down the process. You don't have to try to cram in every bit of information and be slightly descriptive if you want. So having a look at this, we've just gone for a simple action scene. I made it up, I made it up on the spot. So as we got here, John grabs Adam by the arm and throws him to the ground. John walks over and tries to kick Adam. But Adam rolls and misses the kick. Adam gets to his feet and throws a dinner plate at John's head. It smashes John on the head and John is knocked unconscious. Now, even though this is easy to follow in terms of we know that John is the first person to grab Adam um, by the arm and throws him to the ground. He then walks over and tries to kick Adam, but Adam rolls and misses the kick. Adam gets to his feet and throws a dinner plate at John's head. It smashes John on the head and John is knocked unconscious. It's... It, it doesn't heighten the uh, the tension and it's not really it's not exciting to read. It seems very much like robots. John does this, John then does this, Adam then does this, Adam then does this, John then does this, this then happens to John. Now without changing the premise at all, the other way to be able to write it, which is a rule of which is kind of goes against normal punctual um, punctual rules and punctuation rules. It's to do with the word and. Now, normally in sentences, ands are used to kind of combine uh, two se- you know, two sentences together. Something does something which results in something, something. You know, rather than and, you could have therefore, but. But's obviously to contradict. And's normally to be used as a result of something. So by the result of something, you know, John falls over and breaks his leg. It's They're related but, and they're joined by the word and. However... When you're writing, the word and can get used so much and it kind of comes across as quite an amateur word to use because it's and then this and then this and then this. Um, And you don't want to be too clever and try to think outside the box as another word for and. But rather than that, what you can do is you can get rid of the rules about uh, punctuality and replace the word and with comma. And if you then use a comma... The following sentence normally will then have to slightly change, normally adding an ing onto the word that's next. However, it completely changes the flow. So, for example, John grabs uh, Adam by the arm. This, this, this is fine. That is, that's a, a, a simple description, and you can, you can picture it. You could, John grabs Adam by the arm hard, which 
yes, it adds a little bit of adds a little bit of description to type to the type of grab. But remember, we know that it's a fight, and we know a grab normally means that the person is doing it quite aggressively. So to put, if you put gently, it completely changes the meaning. You could, you know, it, you if you did this, you might want to then change, you know, to to change audiences' expectations. But if the main reason for this is to, to cause a fight, then to have hard is kind of slightly not needed. John grabs Adam by the arm, throwing him to the ground. So by taking the word and out here, we've replaced it with a comma. Therefore, throws are, therefore has to become throwing and throw him into the ground. John walks over, walks over, trying to kick, trying to kick Adam. Same, same thing, principle, get rid of the word and, stick a comma in it, that says trying, rather than tries, tries to kick Adam. Now rather than putting, but Adam rolls and misses, Let's allow ourselves to have a full stop. Walks over trying to kick Adam. Now let's put the emphasis on Adam. Adam. Um, Adam. Uh, Adam rolls. Missing. Missing the kick. Now. Rather than having it in one block paragraph. We could then do another paragraph. Because this is one scenario, this is one aspect of the fight. We've had the beginning of the fight, and we've slightly got, you know, the first punch is thrown quite literally. What happens now? Now, rather than trying to combine it all in one big chunk, take your time with it. So you could even have a little um, hyphen to show that it's continuous, or a dot to kind of, a dot, a full stop rather, to, to show that it's ended. Now, Adam gets to his feet gets to his feet. I can't spell. Adam gets to his feet. Now we could do throw in a dinner plate at John's head. But because we've all used the word thrown and we've also used the word grab, you could put Adam gets to his free uh, free. Adam gets to his feet. Now try to think of another word of throw in and you could say um, dashes Adam gets to his feet and um, uh, and um, and launches launches. Adam gets his feet. Come and now this is the only time that you might have the word use "and." Adam gets to his feet and launches a dinner plate at towards. John's head. It's it smashes. It smashes on. It's I can't spell. It smashes on. It smashes on John's John's head, causing him, causing him to be knocked um, conscious. Now look at the the difference here. John grabs Adam by the arm throwing him to the ground. John walks over, trying to kick Adam. Adam rolls, missing the kick. Adam gets to his feet and launches a dinner plate towards John's head. It smashes on it smashes on John's head, causing him to be knocked unconscious. That's also very good. And another example we could go for would be this. John grabs Adam by the arm, throwing him to the ground. He then walks over, trying to kick Adam. Adam, Adam, Adam rolls, misses, missing, missing the kick. Now, all we've done here is we've taken the word uh, John out of the equation and replaced it with he. Now, in order to that to work, you have to then establish who he. Let's get rid of the. Um, who he, put this in bold so you know that it's a new sentence, who he is. So once you're establishing once, feel free to then put he, she afterwards. But it's very it's very tricky sometimes to work out if there's going to be more than one character in the scene. Whoever the, the last action was about, you therefore can put he. So if John does the walking, he then is trips over. So John walks over, John walks up the stairs, 
full stop, he falls over. You wouldn't have to put John walks up the stairs, dot, John falls over. You could also put John walks up the stairs, comma, falling over. But you can put the word he after you've established the character's name. So then we can put Adam gets to his feet and launches uh, a dinner plate towards John's head. It smashes, it smashes on, it smashes on John's eye. It smashes him, it smashes him on the head, causing him to be knocked. Now, same thing as I just said then. Because we've established who the dinner plate is thrown, to, thrown towards, i.e. John, you can then say it smashes him on the head, causing him to be knocked unconscious. Now, if we look at the difference between all of these, all of these examples, what one do you think looks better? And if I was to take these out of bold, so we get the same, um, same example. You know, you've got, you've got the, you've got our first sentence here, which is all in one bit, or all in one paragraph with loads of words and. We've got one here, which is then used in two different paragraphs, replacing the word and. Um, and replaced with a comma and then using an ing onto the following following word or this one where we do a little bit of both but we change and we include the word he once a character is established now personally speaking after after seeing both of these examples this should never be the way you write it's either going to be this one or this one but how enjoyable is it more to read? It's a very easier flowing pace, but still gets the same information across. So the main thing about writing, and this normally comes in, um, if, I was gonna say this normally comes in when you uh, when you come down to redrafting your work. If you naturally possess a way of writing where you can subliminally remember to put um, commas in, and then you be using the word ing's at the end of it, then perfect. However, if you don't and you feel like it's easier to say John does this and does that, go for it. As long as before you submit your work to any any schemes or whatever you may be doing with your work, go back and look at these types of scenes and think how can I get the same message across in less words? And you do that by taking words out, replacing them with punctuation. So John does this, comma, resulting in that. Taking the word and out, replacing it with a comma, this word then changes. So John does this, John falls over, spilling his coffee. Rather than John falls over and spills his coffee. Let's have a look. Um, the cat barks and runs to the door. What would that become? The cat barks, look at me. The dog barks, rather. That would obviously therefore become the dog barks running to the door. Or the dog barks, comma, whilst running to the door. The, 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 the car stops at the traffic lights and four men get out. This then becomes the car stops, stops at the traffic lights. And you can afford to have a full stop here. Four men get out. Or the car the car stops at at the at the traffic lights. Traffic, tra the car stops at the traffic lights. Four men get out. Depends on how impact how impactful you want your next line of dialogue, uh, next line of action to be. These ones tell the same story, and yet this is more suspense. The car stops at traffic lights, dot, four men get out. This is a lot more natural. However, they both tell the same information. This, however, it's a little bit like a list. All of these, the ones that have the word and, sounds like a list. So try to get rid of the word and and replace it with something like a comma, or another conjoining word that isn't and, therefore changing the next letter, sorry, the next word to an ing. 
hopefully you found this lesson uh, useful. Um, as I say, it's one of those things that only really comes with practice about uh, observing why the word and can can be replaced sometimes. Not always, but 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 primarily only use it when you have no other option to. But normally you can always find a way around not using the word and.